Hey, everybody. So we have a Buddha party, party with the Buddha going on on the canvas. And I've looked up some laughing Buddha images that um, I'm excited to explore. So we're about to outline the Buddha. I, um, I did put the six spheres of wellness in here from Unstoppable Dream, um, which Unstoppable Dream had not come through when I painted that newt. Um, so that's kind of cool to bring that in. And then I also went around on the side of each of the lotus petals, I'm trying to see which one you might be able to see the most. Anyway, it doesn't like this is script writing here. Um, my favorite mantra, um, which I'll type below in the comments when we get off, but you guys have seen it. Um, Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. It means may all sentient beings be happy and free and may my life in some way contribute to their happiness and freedom. I mean, it just feels like if that's all happening, that's that's perfection, right? Like that's that's what where we're all headed. So anyway, I love that mantra. So I wanted to put that in there. That mantra is also painted when I was painting my house, the exterior. I had the primer on in the whole front doorway on the exterior. I script wrote Loka Samastasukino Bavantu over and over um, and then painted the final coat. So that's kind of cool. And then um, the other side of my Tara door that's on my bedroom is a big Loka Samastasukino Bavantu. So, um, and that's a really important thing for us all to remember now as um, things in the external world might feel big and overwhelming that we can be the energy that we would want to expand in this world and that does make a difference. So um, this could be a reason why we're painting Laughing Buddha. So um, the first thing I did, so I did look at, I'll show you the photos that I chose because some of the laugh, you know, you look at Laughing Buddha and some of the faces just make you laugh and some aren't, I don't know, they're, they don't as much. So I really like this guy, right? That's a super, <laughs> like it just makes me laugh. And then this is the one that I think, remember at the beginning, well, if you were here, um, the beginning of part one, I was imagining painting uh, Buddha lower down so that there was room to do stuff up here and I saw the rainbow so um, so I'm feeling like this kind of posture but that face um, and I do see him really big but I want the face to be predominant right um, so I may make the face a little bit bigger so I'm gonna leave this uh, I've had people ask me almost like they feel guilty. Like, can I look up a photo? I'm like, yes, I almost always do this. I still don't, I don't really consider myself like good at drawing, right? I mean, I, I can do it when I need to, but it's not like, I don't love to draw. I love to paint. I love color. Um, so anyway, this, part is always kind of like another opportunity for me to get out of my own way and just trust, which is for sure an energy that um, we're being called to. So the first thing I do with drawing, and I learned this like way back at my art center, the Creative Fitness Center in Nashville. I had a friend there who taught a very um, kind of traditional drawing class, actually, and it was awesome. And um, so the first thing is to just kind of circle with a color that um, isn't going to be kind of like where you might do a pencil sketch first, um, but we're going to use paint. So I'm using, I'm mixing just kind of a lighter blue here to kind of outline. And what I'm just going to do is kind of outline the spaces where his head and everything's going to go. So um, when you're painting faces, um, it kind of can freak all of us out sometimes, but you just look at the face as a series of shapes and the, the negative spaces, you know, the spaces between things and, um, and simplifying them. So in this other Laughing Buddha, I've seen other ones where the bottom 
is kind of bigger. So I'm just kind of circling the space that his head will be, and I just want to make sure it's big enough. So, so this is a way to kind of you kind of, you can see, um, and then. But then I feel like I have to move it up because right now it, his body doesn't need to be in proportion, right? And I'm going to have his, his hands are going to be going up from his shoulders kind of like this. Well, maybe it will work. So you've heard the kind of Michelangelo quote about... Um, like liberating the sculpture David from within the rock. So it's kind of sort of what we're doing here. And so I don't know if you can see this, but so I'm just getting an idea of the, of the space. So I can kind of practice to see, is this feel like it's going to work? So the other thing of course is his belly. He's got kind of a predominant, chest here and then his belly so maybe his belly and maybe his knee so like here his knee so that's his belly so the knee might be coming up here right because the main thing we want is his laughing happy face but I wonder if I move his head up a little bit Maybe it's just even kind of fatter, jollier. So here's a knee, and then like, yeah, here's a knee. So I don't even know if you can see it. And I love, look how he's, like the flowers are coming out of his head. So maybe I'll end up, we don't know. We don't have to know yet. All we're doing is getting kind of the outline down. So another thing that I tend to do once I get uh, an idea of the space is I'll paint the background. Okay, I just did that, but so if this, oh, this is the inside of his arm. Okay, so hands, so I'm going, I'm going between the two. Okay, so the top of his hand. So then his arms are way, okay, so his arms are way over here. And then he's kind of got his robes. Okay, I think that'll work. That's what's, right, because the robes are, oh, wow, it's hard to see. Okay, so this is what happens a lot. So you get an idea that you've got it in the right space, but there's a lot going on here, right? Hi, Melissa. So I'm gonna actually add some black in again, and I'm gonna use a bigger brush, and I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go over some of the background. So I'm going kind of with the, like see, I'm painting the same direction as when I outlined, and then I'm just, spreading it out really lightly because I don't want to lose all this background, but I need to be able to see. And it kind of gives you a chance to refine some of your drawing. So, so none of this is like committed yet, right? I can change anything. and not losing okay this is see in negative space you can kind of tell like this arm's actually way over so i'm gonna let yeah let that so so this arm just moved over here I need to figure out the way that um, 
the iPad doesn't go off. So there's this finger and then there's the thumb here, but anyway. Okay, so, so see how you can, so it's like the negative space almost becomes the outline. Then I can take a step back, so then even going around his head, so let's say this is top of his head, and then he's got to have his ears here. The Buddhas. I remember, for some reason, I remember as a kid, someone told me I had big earlobes. <laughs> Maybe it was when I got my ears pierced at age 12, and they're like, oh, you have nice big earlobes, and someone mentioned that um, big earlobes are a sign of abundance. Literally, I think they said that to me, and it comes from Buddha. The big earlobes are a Buddha symbol. So, okay, so now we can kind of take a step back and see. Let me move you here. Now, it's not gonna be kind of perfect yet. This feels like it's going in too much. So I might actually clean the brush and add more glue over this. So one of the advantages to painting really light at first is that um, um, things dry really quick, right? So, so this feels more right over here, so this feels like it's all this wants to be the blue for right now as far as scene and then I can go back to the black and then there's the me so does that seem like a general idea. So now I'm going to use this image <laughs> um, for his face. So one of the things I love about drawing, one of the rules is do whatever feels easiest first. So can you see, let me put one paintbrush down. So we look for this simple shape. So you see this shape that's his big nose and um, eyebrows, right? And then these shapes come out of the side of the nose and then connect to the mouth. So that's what I'm going to do. Like I'm noticing those shapes. And then there's this big jolly jowl here, which is super close to the chin, right? So I might, I could even paint that first, paint this, go, or maybe I start up here. We know eyes come halfway down your face, right? Hi, Emery. So from here to here, halfway is your eyes. God, it looks like I'm like painting eye makeup all over the place. <laughs> um, so, so that's that's important for the proportions. You know, to look at it, the face, and not be like, it's a face, but what's going on? So, oops, just put the blue brush in the black. So I'm gonna. Oh look, of course, halfway down the face is right here. So if his eyes, his little squinty eyes, I are like here, and then this eyebrow, and then the other eyebrow. Oh, see there's, the head's not big enough, so we're gonna have to make the head bigger. So maybe now, since I've already got the blue and I want to see, so maybe I'm going to use the black to out. So we need more, we need more head down here. Well, that's perfect because I wanted the head to be nice and big anyway. And then his ear lobes just go further down. Oh, that already looks better, the proportions. Okay. So... Here's the nose. 
and then there's a space, and then here's his big lap. Okay, now we're going to start seeing him. I love it. All right, and then we'll get um, these kind of laughter lines. Can you see it? Okay, so see, it's hard to see. So now I'm going to take this white. I'm going to get a different brush. And we're going to, we're just going to paint some white in so we can see. Of course, ideally, there's a little, ideally this would dry a little bit. But again, at this point, this isn't anything about it looking like a perfect laughing Buddha face. We're just kind of getting to know it. Ugh, and I'm getting black. And remember, we're developing the awareness, right, of that inner critic. Like the inner critic does not need to be contributing at this point because it's not, like we're not committed to anything yet. This isn't anywhere near done. So just notice how you know, for some of us, comment if you ever do this, but for some of us, we get so critical of ourselves that we don't, we don't give the painting a chance to really, as far as I'm concerned, follow its, like, its journey, right? We start saying like, oh, I can't do this. I'm not good at faces. I'm not this. I'm not that. It's like, it's going to come. And you just... Get curious and take a little of the pressure off. Okay, so there's kind of... And, you know, the face will probably evolve. It won't look exactly like this face that I'm looking at. But, like, look at the simplicity of this shape right above his mouth, right? So, so I'm kind of, I'm just focusing on these shapes and how this goes around. There's kind of a shape there, which this actually is going to change a little bit because his face actually kind of, it's not perfectly round the way I drew it, right? There we go. Now we got kind of jowls. So the lights and the darks will all go in after we get I think one of the greatest intentions for any painting is to challenge yourself and see if you can stay in this like unconditionally loving space of yourself the whole painting without being like, oh, I suck at this, I can't do it. Okay, so there's actually another line that goes there, but I'm just going to... We can add that in later. Oh, there are all kinds of uh, lines around his eyes. Yeah, we also start kind of seeing different parts. And as you paint, like as I just did this, his face felt more how it's going, how it wants to be. So I'm going to expand. So see the outlines, even that first outline we did, nothing's etched in stone. We can always change. So now I kind of start feeling it. It's almost like you can feel, right, the cheeks. So here is cheeks, and they, they go down around here. So I'm going to paint in, just like I'm caressing his cheeks, making him giggle. And I can go back over with the black. I'm going to add to the eyes. But I just want to feel good about the proportions we've got. We can add in some earlobe action. Because I think it's funny how um, 
the ears are actually so attached to this, right? Like, does see that made it like just that made? Um, hi, Lisa. Um, made it easier to see. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna go back to my black brush and work on these eyes. Cause look, I just did the one little, zoom in. So I just did like this little line, but actually there are all these other lines. And look how, f it, it's like a, a funny E or it looks like some kind of Halloween-y shape or something. So let's see. So these, this nose, and then it kind of swoops in and creates it's like we're teaching ourselves how to see. Okay, so that's squinty eye. And then there's his nose and then one comes here. So that white is still wet. Oh. Okay. So we've got this shape going around. And then when I go to paint the the white again, I can work on this again, like you add more white, right? <laughs> this is what I remember um, about painting Laughing Buddha is the face, there are lots of laugh lines. And so it is a fun exercise in getting like staying with the proportions. And of course with Laughing Buddha, we can just laugh at ourselves, right? And here's another tip about this. Like I would recommend not moving forward. Like if I'm not really feeling this face, I'm not gonna just be like, oh, maybe it'll just get better as far as proportions go. Um, so, so I could go and kind of, you know, paint other parts of them, but I wouldn't start adding detail to anything until I felt like I had the spacing correct. And actually this jowl is looking a little more you know, like um, laughing than that one. So I'm gonna make this one even a little bigger. He does kind of have a two prong. And then there's a little white that'll come in there. I have to add white around So it's like you start feeling it when it feels right. If it doesn't feel right, and then notice that. Notice the feeling of like the mind wants it to be right. We want to get this done perfectly right away, especially when we're demoing for people. But I've let go of that. But I've been doing this for 26 years, right? So I've practiced a little bit. Um, but our brains, our logical, rational, linear ego side, really want to get to the right answer immediately. <laughs> we want to do it right the first time. Is that how life works? I mean, if any of you have always gotten it right the first time, like, let's share the screen and you start teaching us how to do that, right? It, um, in my experience, it's more of a, that kind of a journey, right? Rather than just, oh, it just gets better and better and better. And everything works out exactly the way I planned. And it's not how life works. So with the canvas, we practice. Like, okay, we're not there yet. Let's just stay chill, Let's stay in flow. You're practicing this, right? This is, this is like an intention. This is why, for me, I want you to paint. Like, yes, the Laughing Buddha is super fun and having your art that's so meaningful all over your home and people being like, oh my gosh, you painted that? I didn't even know you painted. Like, that's all awesome and I love that, but if I had to give up all the finished product or everything I've learned, if I could only have one or the other, I would take everything I've learned at the canvas, right? About myself and how I wanna be in the world. So this is, um, this is practice. And 
So I'm actually, this could go up a little bit more like that. And then I'll paint some of that in white. And then this is the main eye, but this section then can have a little more. So we just are trusting. Trust, trust, trust. So this actually kind of flows, and this shape kind of flows, and that it's a little bumpy up there. So this is like a flow shape. Okay. So that's all kind of wet right now. So if I had a hair dryer or if I had patience, I'll try and be patient. So maybe I'm being called to be practice being patient. Um, okay, so we'll move on. We'll let his face dry a little bit before we start messing with his eyes because otherwise it's just going to turn into a, um, right, like a muddy mess. So we'll let those dry, but I'm feeling good about the overall, um, oh geez, I didn't even notice. He's got two, look at this, how we don't see things. Look, he's got this and then this. So it's like a jowl shadow and a lip shadow. So, interessante. So is this dry down here yet? Okay, so let's add, I'm going to make his chin. Oh gosh, that looks way more like a chin, doesn't it? And then, we'll kind of move this down a little bit. I'm going back and forth. I keep switching my white and my black brush, which is pretty funny. Okay, so I'm going to do this shape down here. And then i got to fit in. I want to fit in. I don't have to do anything, right? I want to fit in this other smaller, because that's more like lip, actually. And then... Maybe I'll have to make his mouth just a wee bit smaller. Oh yeah, baby. So this then kind of becomes a lip and this is more lip. Nice. Hi, Anna. Thank you, Serendipity Art Hub. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. That just changed a lot. But now is this face fat enough? Maybe I want a little more cheeky cheeky. So think about what are some lessons you guys could comment in the chat just before I offer up mine. So, um, you know, like I made the outline, it provided some initial guidance, like you have to start somewhere, right? But we don't have to stick with that outline. It can always be, um, it can always be changed, painted over, altered. So in this canvas, I keep changing the dark lines and the blue lines and all the things. So they're not so etched in stone as we often believe, right? Okay, so watch this too. So I'm going to take just, I'm going to use a brand clean tofu uh, palette. Okay, really? I, I reuse. So this is from the um, Yummy Impossible Meat breakfast sausages that we ate um, when people were here for the retreat. This is a meat tray, which I don't buy meat anymore, so these are precious. And then tofu trays work really well. And then um, old jars, and I don't buy paper towels. So, um, yeah, like we can minimize our painting waste. Um, but look at what happens when I add white to the parts of his face that are going to be more predominant. So this lip, like watch how it pops out. So I'm still getting some yellow. This 
is going, this painting. So if you're just joining, this is the painting that had my newt on it. You probably got that. And then um, it's been like 12 different paintings. I spoke to my daughter. She called before um, I got back on here and I told her, showed her what I was doing. She's like, how many paintings do you think that canvas has been? And I'm like, right. Um, I don't really want to do this, but I would normally put, we can put some white right above his eyebrows. So see how like his face is popping out? Oh, we just have kind of zombie eyes. Okay, do we suppose that is dry at all? I've got the heat cranking in here. Let's see, I can add paint over that. And then we can also go over, like this nose outline doesn't need to be so predominant. So actually I could bring this up. See, if we don't stay, if we don't get attached, so I can do that. Okay, and then I could take some more black, which again, patience would be maybe better, but if I, do you ever find it's hard to talk and paint at the same time? Okay, so I could bring the mouth up. Because we got to have the big ol, since I, kind of lost some of it there. Oh, I'm feeling it. He's getting there. Okay. So now let's see if we can do these eyes. I'm going to pull it up on my, so these are the eyes. Look how abstract those are up close. So we're going to add this up here. So there's so much texture on here that getting fine lines is a bit tricky. And then this is actually his eye here. So he, there's that, Oof. and then that. Well, that's not it yet either, is it? But that's okay. We're just gonna keep, keep going. Okay, so this, more like that. This is his eyebrow. This is like this, right? Sometimes I feel like I'm, yeah, doing makeup. Okay. So then we just go back and forth. Those of you who've done the Buddha program, actually from a distance, it's fun seeing it in the camera. That's another thing, um, a great tool if you're having a hard time seeing things is to snap a picture or don't look at the painting for a while. <laughs> I'm trying not to see it. And then turn around and look at it and see what you see. So the eyes are still looking a little funky, but like it's gonna keep evolving. Part of that is because it's more the pure white, see, and the eyes would be further back. So I'm going to try and let this dry. His eyes are actually, so maybe going in. It's funny how sometimes it's like the littlest changes end up making okay, a little paintbrush with it. stray. Um, so this needs to be, this black part needs to be curved more. And maybe these all need to be kind of the same. So I'm going to end up going back and forth between the black and the white so many times. And the weight of the, like the brush. I mean, that's a little better. So it's gonna be like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth.
Oh. I mean, I think we're... It's looking pretty jolly. What do you guys think? I mean, we're nowhere near complete, but... Okay, and then actually this. Um, but... But at least it gives me like to feel like the proportions are correct, right? Thumbs up. Oh, good. Thanks, Anna. Thank you, Kate. Love it. Simple, right? I know the eyes, squinty eyes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because the big goal for this is that when people walk in the room, they start cracking up. Okay, here's another place to add some weight. So over here on the gel. Oh, there we go. Isn't that fun? How just the littlest, littlest thing makes a difference. Of course, his bindi there is gonna have to be something fun. So then normally, um, like with the Buddhas, I'll I'll put color back into his face after I get the proportions um, all set up. Oh, good. He definitely makes you smile. Yeah, he's feeling pretty dang, pretty dang happy for me, too. And OK, so now we're going to tackle the rest of his body. So this is kind of, I'm kind of, the videos, this is part two. Um, part one was the first layer. Part two is the outline. So I'm kind of following, you know, how we, um, how the painting practice is in Vision Quest, for example, um, the Creatively Fit Coaches. Like everything comes from this framework. The fun, fun, fun first layer, then outline, and then adding to it, um, which we'll keep going, the fine details. But I don't even have to think about the final details yet. And I don't have to think about how, oh, I just, the rainbow is going to go up into the frame, of course. Duh. And, um, but all that final detail stuff, I don't need to know right now. So again, another thing we're practicing in this most awesome painting practice is how to stay present right so right now it's just about allowing buddha to kind of become buddha okay so he's gonna have so his chest here let's see how the other you know so it's kind of this uh so maybe let me get a bigger let me get another bigger brush Okay, so I could do it with black or, okay, I'll try outlining with black first. So again, proportion-wise, the belly is important, but, so he's got his, oh, his, his jacket is kind of coming from those ears, and then his, chest is kind of there and then his belly big old belly so let's take a bigger brush here and the white I'll use some of this white too and kind of again the most important thing is to paint right along the outlines which of course I just painted with the black so I'm going Super light. It's just to let me know ooh, mud. if the proportions seem correct. And see how there's black kind of from the mandala. When I cover up that, it makes it easier. Oh, and this will be his necklace because he has a necklace, of course. Um, okay. More white. I always order twice as much white paint as anything else. Um, okay, and then here's his belly, and here's his legs down here. So this, this whole, this 
full round happy belly. Right, so this, this part of the mandala was making me think I didn't have much belly room, but actually we do have lots of belly room. Gotta have belly room, right? Okay. So now I actually feel like I can move his chest down a little bit. Big old belly. And then he's got a leg coming up. So see, now I'll go in with the black. We outlined in blue first, so here's a knee of his here. And then here's a knee here. He's sitting cross-legged. Oh yeah, right? Okay, so then he's got these robes, which look super comfy. So lots of drapey, drapey. I'm not gonna worry about the drapes yet, but as far as um, his arms, so you kind of see some, and then it's comes. So I'll have to, decide what color his robes are because they're going over the black there but this is giving me an idea there's his arm there okay and i feel like he should have all different color robe right i'm gonna take since i already have this brush full of white and I've got um, I've got pink and red here already out so sometimes that's how I decide at least what color to paint first oh hi Avaya so good to see you see you kind of see you okay so just so we can see get an idea of the his robe. Again, black's not dry. Maybe I'll add a little orange to this side. I didn't do a second line here. Right, so then this area is all robe. So maybe I'm just doing it kind of stripey so that I'm still leaving some of this first layer coming through. But see, around the outlines is where it gets important. There we go. <gasps> so fun. My favorite is when it all starts to come together, right? And then you can just start playing. Feels like the, I don't want to say the hard part, but the part that can be the most like yeah, is just getting oh look how this side goes kind of out and this side goes in so I'm gonna make this side scoop up a bunch of white so it's like here's the robe the sleeve of the robe and then here's underneath here's his leg Okay, and so this wants to go out more. I've got some red here too, so I'm gonna add some red. Can add some red over here. But, and notice how, like on this side it looks, at least to me, it looks a little bit wonky because I don't have black there. But that's because I, I don't have black, like on the other side. So your mind's eye is unconscious. It's constantly processing things. So if, even though you know what it is you're painting, if your mind's eye is like, yeah, babe, but I don't see it. So I don't know what you're seeing. Um, so this is why we want to just make sure that we've got kind of proportions done. I could, just to see if it helps me see things, I could add 
kind of some drapies in there. Right? It's like, get lighter. Yup, yeah, yup, yeah, yup. Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah, this side. Oh, I'm gonna make that blue kind of another outline. And then I'm gonna keep this star from Newt. Yes, over the ocean. Am I painting over it? Well, I can always go back over that star some more. I've got lots of gold. So you see what I'm talking about here? So the, the background I'm sure it's hard to see. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. And it may or may not last, but see, oh, I can't zoom in. Okay, so see, oh, swipe left to reveal connections and reactions. Okay, um, so see this line here? That's that first layer coming through. I'm just kind of letting it be another outline. I love that when that happens. And then if I decided I wanted that everywhere, I would just go back with this blue and put it back in and then put the black in. I don't have to know yet. And then when the black dries, I'll probably pop that star out more with white and then add gold. Um, this is our newt informed Buddha. Oh my gosh, loving it. Okay, so we've got a basic, are we happy with the arms? This one looks too straight. This one, um, yeah, this needs to go out this way more. So I'm gonna have to change my water here soon. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna make his upper arms a little fatter here. So it's kind of like the arms didn't have enough. Of course this, like this might be the elbow. We didn't really get into elbows, see, the first time, but now we can kind of imagine where an elbow might be and add a little bump. Hmm. Still looks a little So this is the biggest kind of gift you can give yourself is really get these proportions down before you do too much detail, right? So I'm feeling like his, in order for his arm to look correct, I want to make his, oh, there, we just lost that extra outline, but that's okay. Um, make that uh, bigger, whatever you want to call it. Extend the cuff of his um, robe. So I'm going to go back because, again, it, even though I know it, it's just hard to see. It's almost like it's a scene and a feeling thing. Do you guys do that? Do you like feel it when it kind of hits the sweet spot? It's like you feel it in your body. Or maybe some of us like hear a sound or something. And it's not like the body has to be um, perfect, perfect, but we, again, we just want the proportions correct. And now I'm wondering, maybe it's, I don't know, I don't want to use, have too many black brushes going. Maybe it's too, it's this is a little straight. There's a big old glob of, yeah, I think that was part of it. 
Okay, well, I'll let that dry. Yes. More better, more better. Okay, what's everybody else painting today? You guys tell me? The sweet spot rings, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. The fine brushwork. I swear, oh, you know what I just see looking at this? I see stars all on the top of his head. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Do you guys see that? It's funny, when I look at it from here, I don't really see it, but from there, I do. So I'm gonna add a little more white where I have this yellow going on, and I'm just gonna get that in there. I am super into the spaciousness right now. God, that's so crazy. So the stars could be actual stars, or they could just, do they wanna be just kind of dots for now? I don't know, I see them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see, there's one here. Yeah, this. It's funny, I can see them better, way better in the... Okay. Ha! <laughs> Makes me happy. Okay, over here. Yeah. Might have to get out glitter. Like throw it on there? That's not really gonna work, is it? I've got those um, dragonfly paints. But, oops. Got the gold, of course. Where else? Well, over here. So this is kind of an example of detail that doesn't really need to be in there yet, but I wanted to capture it because it's like I just saw it looking in the can't in the phone. And it feels perfect. So those would be super easy to paint. Over. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm going to sign off a little bit for part two. I don't know. No glitter, please. Iris wants glitter. Yeah, well, I won't do glitter just because it's going to be hard to get it on there. But I'm definitely, oh, thank you. I'm definitely feeling the rainbow that's going to go up onto the frame and um and all this cosmic buddha work on his belly a little bit his knees yeah yay okay i'll be back in like 30 40 minutes and i'm gonna check and see what you guys are painting if you're um posting what you're painting and if i start painting too much i'll just hop back on and funny so when I look at it here there's this blue outline but that white looks like his head doesn't it I mean it <laughs> thank you Anna um he's like rising up out of the canvas or that's why I love taking the subject to the edges even though not up here but he will with the maybe I'll put okay while well, you guys are here this would be kind of fun. Put the the rainbow and let that outline dry. And I feel like it's going to be outlined in white up here, right? So oh. this is how you end up with those goobers dried on the end of your paint tubes. So we're going 
going up. Right? Kind of, sort of? Oh, I hope for any of you that struggle with your inner critic that this <laughs> da, painting workshop is showing you just how you can just be so unconditionally accepting of yourself. We just trust, it's all gonna... Okay, so, not that I really need to, but I can always add more colors. Okay, I'll use this. Okay, so we got this one. Constant opportunities to tweak. Okay, and then up top, this is what gets me really excited. I love painting outside the lines. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the middle there, but I guess I'm going to. So this is this. Okay, right, so now we've got the rainbow. We put black in the middle or we put, well, we'll just do this. Do another one of those little outlines. You can always paint. really is like creating your own worlds, right? Oh, Anna, I'm working with primary colors and radiance. Kate, what is your recommendation for helping ourselves figure out what we want to paint after the first layer? I tend to get stuck continuing to make marks and trying to add contrast, but end up losing my favorite parts and then feeling stuck and critical. Okay, thank you, Kate. So I mentioned in the first video, so, um, Sometimes I go to the canvas to, you know, just relax, to paint, um, you know, for fun, whatever. And I don't have an idea of what I'm gonna paint. And so I paint on this first layer back here until I see something or I'll just walk away and, um, I'll, I'll just let that first layer be a first layer. I'll start another first layer. I might have three first layers done before I get an inspiration. And here's the other cool thing about this is that um, what if you are meant to exactly have that experience right now so that you can learn how to not get critical of yourself when you don't know what to do right away? Like, does that ever happen in the art that is your life, right? It's kind of like what I said. We all tend to want to get it right, have the answer, know what to do next right away. We don't like to throw out 10 different ideas and then sit there and kind of figure it out. But staying open is a really important thing. So perhaps you're being given an opportunity on the canvas exactly that, like you described, um, not knowing what to paint after the first layer because you're meant to e either relax like I don't know what to paint next so I'm just going to keep painting first layers or if I don't want to lose the super fun first layer I have right now I'm just going to move on to another canvas and start another first layer and then maybe you'll see something like oh there's a dream catcher or a dolphin 
<laughs> you know, something comes to mind. I was literally like lying in bed awake early the other morning and just started thinking like, I want to paint a laughing Buddha. And then I was like, where am I going to put it in the house? And blah, blah, blah. And then this came to me and that's how that all happened. It was involuntary. So um, what I would say first is become comfortable without knowing what to paint next, right? And it's almost like as soon as you let go of this kind of needing to know what's next, that you'll start getting the inspiration. So I would recommend, Kate, um, next time, say you don't have any first layers or whatever, next time you go to paint, paint with one or two or two or three canvases at once. Um, Carol, when she um, was painting, so she was painting here, and I gave her this unstretched canvas just to paint, um, to clean her brush off on. And this is what happened with that. So um, this can become another first layer. You may see something in like that canvas that like you wouldn't see it in the canvas you're working on, but the canvas you're just cleaning your brush on, you might see something. So sometimes what I end up painting comes from within the canvas. It's like I see it and I pull it out. And then other times I'm thinking about something I want to paint or as I'm painting, something reminds me like um, we were at the retreat and when everyone painted their uh, spaciousness, the cosmos, starry sky, whatever they wanted to paint. And we went around kind of just had a spaciousness bath and we were popping out what we loved, what we found beautiful, because that's another aspect of the divine feminine. And I saw a snake in one in someone else's paintings. It was just kind of a wiggly line and they kind of made it look like a snake. So that led to me painting a snake on my canvas, right? So it's like, if you don't know what to paint next, just don't go to that level. Either go to another canvas or stay on the first layer. Then likewise, um, when you, you know, get an aha, like, oh, I want a laughing Buddha in my house, then you can go to the canvas you already have ready. Um, another fun thing to do is uh, maybe you have an oracle deck that has lots of imagery. There are some of, some of my oracle decks are more, um, just ones I have, are, have a lot more symbols. The um, Rainbow Warrior, which is one of my favorites, I'll show you. Um, it has, in all of the cards, um, there are just um, a lot of symbols. So like, oh, here's synthesis. So I might look at this and decide like, oh, I wanna paint this arrow or start with a star. This is um, a dove on top of her head or the ankh or just maybe the mandala-ish or the triangles or the waves or something in the card will um, speak to me. Oh, I've pulled this one a lot, insight, right? So she's got butterfly wings. Um, here's intuition, really beautiful. So here's like, look at this multicolored lotus, a hummingbird. So sometimes I'll pull a card and that will give me an idea of something to paint. Um, you can keep, uh, over, you know, I've got torn out, pieces of paper around or um, a magnet board in the studio. If I see something, I'll um, print it out or take it and put it in there, or, you know, like a cool greeting card or something. So you can also kind of collect images. Um, and then another thing, if you have Rise Above, do you have my book Rise Above? Um, but you can search, like say you're painting at your first layer and you're not sure what to paint next and meditate on or just think about like, oh, okay, what energy do I want more of? What do I want to feel more of? Is it inner peace or security or love or joy or whatever? And then just Google, seriously, like pull out the phone and search like sacred symbol for joy or for clarity or whatever it is, and then see what comes up, right? So there are so many ways um, the trick is, is to remove your attention from, I don't know what to paint, I never know what to paint, you know, 
blah, you know, whatever, the negative self-talk, like pull your attention away from that and focus on, which I know you can identify with, and I, Kate, I'm speaking to everybody here, right? Um, but focus on all the things there are to paint. Like, is there any end to what we can paint? Ooh, there's so many things. And, and perhaps what you'll uncover, what I just got a ripple of is like, yeah, there are so many things to paint, but what's the right thing, right? We are our inner school girl. She wants, you know, the gold star by her name. She wants to like paint the right thing. And um, sometimes there's just what you're meant to paint in that moment. I really believe um, that these paintings and the symbols we paint are medicine, their energy. We have a different conversation in our dialogue depending on what we're painting. So, you know, maybe the ankh, like the ankh symbol is powerful. And I don't, I mean, it could be a little symbol like these, see these little ones next to my stove this um, mystic can, that was my symbol for 2021. And the snake, that was 2020. <laughs> Little did I know. Um, but maybe you just paint an onk on there just as another layer. Just like, oh, shoot, Whitney said onk and that got me kind of curious. So paint an onk, it doesn't have to be what you hang in the living room, right? Just paint the onk. Maybe there's a message for you from the onk. And, um, you know, just saying or listening or reading about things is way different than spending all this time creating a symbol. So, um, Kate, let me know if that helps. And, um, oh, good. Okay, I hope that helps. You can also come onto this page and look at people's paintings. There's nothing wrong, like Penelope's dragons that she's painting, like, oh my gosh, who doesn't want to paint a dragon after looking at those paintings? Um, okay, so Anna is saying gazing is a big part of the practice prior to seeing what to do next. Good to gaze lovingly, not critically. Yeah. So even um, softening the focus of your eyes, you know, just kind of letting your vision blur. Or like I said, like I saw those stars because I looked at our Laughing Buddha man through the phone. And... Um, that's super helpful. So sometimes you'll see things or I'll take a picture and I bump up the contrast or put filters on and I'll see something different as well. So lots of things to do. I also, when we were on our break, I had a little um, curious musing around that I was painting a male Buddha in my kitchen. Um, not that I, it's not like I only want divine feminine images and you know, I'm talking a lot about that right now. And this is the enlightened masculine, which we have within us. So your inner critic, when it's stopping you from doing things, you know, it's kind of being a party pooper. That's like our unenlightened inner masculine. And our enlightened masculine is more like that. So you can ask Laughing Buddha, and Laughing Buddha would just laugh at your all the colors and how happy they make him and just he would laugh and say just don't sweat it just keep painting color if that's all that feels right right now and when you are called to paint something else you will get there right so allowing the process to um, be a journey right because it really is it's not about the finished piece as much as the process and then the fact that that process gets engaged and encoded into this painting. Oh, well, I just got really excited to paint his necklace. So his necklace, it goes down and it kind of sometimes drapes over his belly. It gives, uh, creates a little dimension. So, okay, I'm gonna go take a break, get some water, and I'll be back in a little bit to do more detail on Buddha. Just gonna see, wow, see if there are any other questions. Okay. Okay, everyone. Thanks for joining me and um, I'll be back.